This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being. Being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. Ayurveda may be the world's oldest continuously practiced health system. Dating up to 5,000 years ago, Ayurveda can loosely be translated as the science of life. The word comes from combining Ayur, meaning life, and Veda, meaning knowledge. So Ayurveda literally means the knowledge of life, how to live in the best possible way. Ayurveda is a very basic, simple, natural approach to living. It is a beautiful combination of oral and written instruction, spirituality, philosophy, mythology, and scientific knowledge that has been around for over 5,000 years. It is rooted in the oldest spiritual texts of India called the Vedas. These texts, some of which date back to 450 to 1500 BCE, are widely considered to be the most ancient science and address all aspects of healing and well-being for both body and mind. Ayurveda, even though it originated in India, gained traction and prestige in Sri Lanka, China, Tibet, and Nepal, influencing these various philosophies and healing traditions. There was a point when Western medicine denounced Ayurveda as inferior when India was colonized. However, it continued to be practiced under the radar of colonists in rural areas and monasteries. Ayurveda is making a huge comeback in India, North America, and other Western countries. We are now looking to combine the science and technology of traditional Western medicine with Ayurveda's holistic, preventative healing art. With the emphasis on prevention and empowering people to have more control over their health via the choices they make in their everyday lives, Ayurveda has become a holistic wellness system that is infiltrating the mainstream unbeknownst to many. For instance, Kaiser Permanente is displaying billboards around LA referencing circadian rhythms. How crazy fantastic is that? Costco did a two-page layout last summer on Ayurveda and holistic health. And yes, they called it by its real name. Ayurveda and self-care go hand in hand. Valeria interviews Paula Pister. She is an Ayurvedic health and life coach, yoga teacher, and busy mom. Her journey began as a young model and actress, where she struggled with self-worth and body image issues. In her 20s, becoming a certified yoga teacher helped Paula appreciate and love her body more, leading her to explore Ayurveda, yoga's sister science. Now, Paula teaches midlife women simple daily and seasonal self-care tools rooted in ancient wisdom and modern habit change science. She is a strong advocate for self-care, aiming to help women overcome the belief that prioritizing themselves is selfish or to feel guilty about. In Ayurveda, our energy reserves are called ojas. Paula emphasizes that without replenishment, this energy depletes, leaving women vulnerable to mental, emotional, and physical imbalances. Having experienced burnout herself, she understands the challenges faced by busy women juggling multiple responsibilities. Growing up with a positive self-care role models, Paula learned its importance later in life. Now in her 50s, she is committed to being an exemplary model for her children and helping other midlife women reshape outdated beliefs about self-care, listening to their intuition and reclaiming control of habits that are life-depleting, not life-enhancing. Because self-care does not come in a one-size-fits-all box, a bottle, or from Amazon. It takes committing to yourself and deeper desires, being gentle and kind with yourself, and understanding that this is a journey. Every step along the path is an opportunity for growth, 
deeper insight, and a chance to connect with your inner wisdom, which is always guiding you. Paula stresses that self-care starts with self-worth, setting boundaries, and learning to say no nicely and guilt-free. She believes this approach is not selfish, but essential. As a healthy, vibrant, and happy individual, better equipped to care for others and show up in the world as your best and most vibrant self. Meet Paula at mindbodybright.com. Here's the interview with Paula Pister. In your own words, who is Paula Pister? I am a woman in my 50s. I am a mom of two. Um, I have been married to the same man for 26 years. (laughs) He's also one of my dearest friends. Hmm. Um, I have to say, as I've been looking Mm -hmm. and thinking more about this, I am too a seeker of wisdom and knowledge. And I learned that from my father at a really young age. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm finally really embracing that. Um, I'm a creative at heart. Um, I've always been. And now my passion is really helping other midlife women and just women. I've worked with all different women um, really tap into their own potential and their own um innate wisdom. And my vehicle is Ayurveda and yoga and meditation and all these tools that I bring in that are ancient. My goal is to share them in the modern world in which we live, the place that we live, the time and with the people. So that is for me um, where my heart lies these days. And also, um, I feel like there's a trickle down because when we do that for ourselves, we are actually modeling it for Mm. the next generation and for our children. So I love horses. I love animals. Mm. I love going fast on my bike, on skis, in a car, (laughs) but I can't say that. (laughs) I think I'm an adventurous. I love to travel. I am, uh, I think I'm, for me, I feel quite youthful Mm. at heart. And I am excited always every day when I wake up about what I get to do and who I get to share my own experience and wisdom with, along with all the traditions that I too study. So um, did that answer your question? (laughs) Yes. Yes. How wonderful. All these beautiful things (laughs) and aspects of of you coming together. Yes. So uh, I think we talked off record and you you hint uh, to, to to this answer, to the answer to the question that I'll be asking you now. Okay. The inspiration to do what you're doing these days, or what you have mm-hmm. been doing, what what inspired you so deeply mm-hmm. on the path of Ayurveda? Well, uh, Valeria, I was a yoga teacher. I studied yoga in my 20s in New York City, and I was teaching classes and running around town and, you know, wearing the gear and calling myself a yogi and loving it. And it, it maintained my sanity in a city that I was kind of like a small fish in a big pond. I had moved from Vancouver, Canada. Um, and there was a point in my 30s later on when I became a mom I became a mom at 37 with my my first child who just went to college this year Mm -hmm. and I was I recognized that there had to be more than just the hour to an hour and a half on the yoga mat Um, And I wanted to know more about, well, what about taking care of myself the other 23 hours of the day? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that yoga and Ayurveda, they are sister sciences, and they're based in a lot of the same um, spiritual and ancient texts. Um, The Sharaka Samhita, the Vedas, like you mentioned in our conversation, and 
I thought, okay, hold on. Like, even as a teacher, I want to be inspiring more than just like a great playlist or a great sequence. Like, how are these people walking out the door into whether it was New York or Los Angeles, where I am now, right. and how are they showing up? Like, what's their operating system off their yoga mat, you know? Right. Right. And it was in, my, I was 45, actually, when my father um, had a massive heart attack and I wasn't there. And uh, that, like I had said earlier, was sort of what rocked my world. Um, and it didn't just shake it, like it rocked it to the core. And as a mom now of two, I had a six and a two-year-old, um, I was overwhelmed. I was stressed out. I was feeling like I was not following my path because I was also an actor for many years. Right. And I mean, that's a whole other story, but I was suddenly um, at home with two kids and my husband was traveling and, and everything was sort of up in the air. And I remember clearly standing in the foyer of our house, holding a brand new baby going, like looking mm -hmm. at my husband as he was running out the door to go to a new job going, like thinking like, what the, you know, like yeah. what just happened? Yeah. Um, yeah. And she of course is the, the greatest blessing, but like, for me, that's where it started it was more in my like late thirties, my early forties. I came into a wonderful community, yoga, health coaching uh, with one of my first coaches, Kate Stillman. And that's where I really dove into Ayurveda because in yoga school, we get like very little training mm -hmm. in Ayurveda, mm -hmm. you know, it's like mm -hmm. an hour or two. And I was like, how is this possible? Like these two, one cannot coexist without the other. Right. Um, but of course, yoga became popular because it had to do with the physical body. And, right. you know, it, in the West, of course, it caught on and became trendy. Whereas Ayurveda now, I think, is becoming more and more pop, not even so popular. I mean, I can't wait until it does. Yeah. But it really is what helps us to take care of ourselves off our mat. Like I like to think of yoga, and this is so general. Yoga is like, um, our spiritual health and it's the spiritual aspect of Ayurveda and Ayurveda to me feels like the health and wellness aspect of yoga. Of mm. course, the two yeah. go hand in hand, right? right? They're not exclusive. So, um, yeah. So it was after my dad died that I really had that sort of earth shaking, like what am I? And now I was mm. going down a different path, becoming an entrepreneur, learning to create my own business, learning tech, learning the, mm. the vehicles. And it was mm. like, I say, I was like on a I was building a plane while I was flying it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah. but yeah, and I've just found like, especially Ayurveda, like the tools that I learn, have learned and have put into practice and not always perfectly at all, um, mm -hmm. have really helped me as I've gotten older and moved through perimenopause and menopause and just having it in my toolbox is so amazing. And I can't imagine having gotten into my 50s without it to be honest right so right wow there's I have so many questions here <laughs> way too many but I want to uh, about everything that you said I made notes here some of the things that you said but um so that's the reason why you sent me the poem that I was curious about that there was a poem that your father Vic Pister he wrote um right Paula in 2003 mm -hmm. So it's titled A Noble and a Traveler. I mean, it, this is just, um, wow, it's a, as deep as it gets in the sense of um, spiritual knowledge and, um, and spiritual practice, too. Mm -hmm. So I love the poem. I highlighted a section here, and I would love for you to read um, it later. So, but I want to mention that. So the, the, your father's name's Vic, Vic Pister. Mm -hmm. I want to mention him now. And I mm -hmm. also wanted to ask the question about, he was he a, um, um, what, how did he express his uh, spirituality in daily living? I guess that question comes to mind. Um, yeah, it's interesting. And, you know, I sent you that poem only because I thought maybe you'd be interested in it. Um, oh, personally? I, oh, God. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> well, and just because I, you know, listening more and more to your, to the podcast, I see yeah. so much about um, 
you know, you dive into so many different topics. Yes. And, yeah. um, but my father was, he was a Rosicrucian, which basically are considered seekers of knowledge and wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, there's a long history there and some people might think it's weird, but it's really not. And he was not, mm-hmm. he was basically a very curious person. And uh, I grew up going to the Lutheran church and yeah. I remember it was more of like, this is just what we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then I remember I must have been in elementary school and my father was like, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm out of here, <laughs> you know, like yes. to my mom, you do you, you figure out what you need to do. Uh, but I got a quest and I'm on a mission to get to the truth. Oh and God. that's what he did. And he went mm. to Egypt and he went to all these fabulous places and he wow. wrote beautiful poetry. Like that is just one of his many. Wow. Um, and I won't, I, I mean, that's a whole other topic, but you know, he studied many different religious beliefs and practices, and it does sort of tug on my heartstrings because now at my age and how much I've kind of dove into this one Ayurveda, you know, which is also yeah. kind of at the the root of many um, different philosophies and, and practices, the conversations that he and I would be having right now would be fantastic, mm-hmm. you yes. know, because... Yes. Um, <laughs> But so, so yes, so he, 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 and he was a poet and he was a realtor Mm. and he was a golfer and he was a Mm. guitar player Mm. and um, my son plays guitar. And I've asked him in the past, how do you learn music so quickly? And my son said to me, because grandpa shows me. So there's, he comes through my son. He comes, he comes in many ways, but that's again, like I said, a (laughs) different Mm. Um, uh, yes, yes. And that's another, it is another topic in a way, um, f- from the realm of practicality, right? Some people, mm-hmm. I mean, just as a topic, but everything is connected. So I don't see the difference between spirituality and practicality, the physical right. and the non-physical, uh, dual, mm-hmm. non-dual. So everything is one, really. So I love how curious he used that word he was about truth or knowing about the truth and what would that what what that was and seemed like he was um in in that quest the poem that you sent to me is very profound Mm -hmm. so i would love for you to read it in the end if you don't mind of course conversation sure so um another Initial question that I I would love to ask you. I have these warm up questions here, (laughs) although we already warmed up in a way. (laughs) If if your life had one purpose only, Paula, uh, what comes to mind? What would that be for you? What yeah, yeah, for this one purpose to to the human experience? Love. Mm. Yeah. Love. To love each (laughs) other, to love ourselves, to love our choices, the things we engage in, to experience that feeling of um, pure, um, innocent love. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think, what we, we all strive for, isn't it? To love... Yes. To love ourselves, that's mm. one of the hardest ones, mm. isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. It, that gets us started um, on the topic of self-care, self-worth, mm-hmm. right, self-love. Mm-hmm. That feels to me, that's my, that's it really does. It, I guess it goes like this. The more we know ourselves, um, mm-hmm. the more we know God, right? The infinite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I guess if we get to know ourselves, we, we would fall in love with it. And not as a person, but uh, a piece of the infinite. And maybe not even a piece, the whole already. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's, uh, to me, it feels that way, that we are on this quest to find out more what we are, even beyond who we think we are and that's what we would find and i think that this would be the um um the practical uh, part of it of that uh, discovery we would mm-hmm. fall in love with ourselves mm-hmm. in the in that in that sense of appreciation gratitude um yeah that that would change everything so and 
You know, I wonder why it's so challenging. Why do, do, have you uh, contemplated, contemplated this idea of, um, of the challenge to know ourselves, to, to fall in love with what we find? Why do so many of us, in a way, um, run <laughs> from mm -hmm. that discovery? <laughs> and we are just focused on what, you know, seems to be real with the, the, the physical experience of body-mind. I have mm -hmm. heard about recently that's kind of shocked me because I was not really aware of that. I interview a lot of them in touch with a lot of spiritual teachers and spiritual people. And they said, somebody told me, 95% of humanity uh, is focused on survival. They are mm -hmm. not really thinking about spiritual things yet. So talk to me for a moment about that. Um. Uh... I think, you know, we come in, uh, in Ayurveda, it's your vikriti and your prakriti, and we come in with certain things. And then from the moment we take our first breath, we are imprinted, we are influenced by teachers, preachers, parents, peers, mm -hmm. media, right. you know, right. media, right. so mm -hmm. many things that I think pull us away from who we entered this world as right. and um, and not that it's malicious in any way. Most of the yeah. time it's mostly, you know, this just part of our, it's just part of being raised, yes. you know? Um, yes. And I don't think, uh, I think there's such a, sometimes a, um, you know, there's a, there's certain things that we just, we feel, well, from the time we're little, we should, we have to be on a schedule. We should be not crying. We should be, mm -hmm. you know, all yes. these things that as children, yes. even, I mean, this is where it happens. I, I believe it's the first seven years where we're actually yes. being imprinted. That little meaning making machine of ours, our mind is taking yes. in how we feel about ourselves, who we are in the world, what the world is to us, what this person is, what men are, what women are, what money is, what happiness is right so it's just like yes. coming at us all the time and that's just every human being right. um right. you know i think animals it's more of an instinctual thing but because yeah. we communicate yeah. and we impact each other so clearly and obviously mm -hmm. we rely as babies we rely on our parents for so many years of our lives yeah. um that we take on other people's beliefs even expectations you know, parents yeah. that maybe mm -hmm. didn't fulfill their own that now want their children to become dot, dot, dot. Um, I think there it's coming at us on so many different levels. I have an 18-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son, and I just see what kids are dealing with nowadays from social media and what right. is beautiful, what is acceptable, what is smart, what is successful. You know, I mean, we all know that, even as yeah. I, I think women... Um, I was listening to a great uh, one of your podcasts with Chelsea Husum, Husum yeah, and yes. I loved your conversation with her. It was very, you know, interesting. And um, the one thing is what I do love with women is that we are innately nurturers, yeah. you know, whether we're nurturing children or aging parents or pets or others, whatever, our gardens um, we have, we have more support, I believe, than the men do, um, mm, for, yeah. I mean, that's for so many other reasons, but, um, yeah. yeah, I think there's a part of just, I, I almost feel like it's just a part of us evolving. Uh -huh. Like it's built yeah. into us as humans. We can't get away from it. Right. And it's through those limiting beliefs, it's through those mm. challenges and stuff that we we rise or we learn or we evolve mm. because even I think you and Chelsea said if life was a walk in the park, <laughs> it's our challenges, right? That we really come up against ourselves, against what we believe, um, about what is important to us, to our values. Yes. And I think it's really easy for us to be hard on ourselves 
because mm-hmm. we're often comparing. Yeah. Right. Like I think the trees yeah. outside aren't looking at each other going, my leaves are nicer than yours. <laughs> the cats don't walk by each other and go i have a prettier coat than you do like the blades of grass don't go well i'm greener than you are (laughs) (laughs) yes yes true true so i'm not sure if that answered the question i know it's okay (laughs) yeah it does so it's so it has to do with conditioning so it's easier to to be conditioned than to remain unconditioned as we Mm -hmm. enter this world yes yes and then i think we hit sorry i think we hit a certain place in our lives where something happens you know and that doesn't mean that you have to be at a certain age or a wise and had years of experience it can happen quite early in life but there's usually there's something there's a transformation there's an something, whether it's a diagnosis or a divorce or a heartbreak or, um, Mm -hmm. you know, a bankruptcy or whatever that is, that if we're living awake, you know, we are able to see that as an opportunity Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. to learn, like, like you were saying earlier, like what's in it that I need to learn here on this earth school called planet earth. Mm. And I think, unfortunately, what we're dealing with as we get older are people um, that often have found ways to, like you said, to avoid the challenge, the pain, having to change Mm. for a million reasons, because it could bother somebody else. If I change, it's too hard to change. My identity is around this, you know, um, looking for different band-aids like alcohol, which is a really actually, Larry, a big one right now that I'm actually finally um, bringing a little bit more front and center because it's so important just how, how we use some of these substances to avoid the deeper Mm. issues, the pain, right? We put, we numb out, we find ways to run away from or to ignore doing that deeper work, right? I mean, so many people are walking around just blindly or um, Mm -hmm. too afraid. And that's the sad part is that's why podcasts like this and the access that we have to everything now is so important because you cannot not know how Mm. to get inspired in some way or another, right? Right. Like you just have so much access to it, but um, yeah. Gosh, and you mentioned that, you know, about emotions. I love the, um, Mm -hmm. I think it's the article's title, A Few Things I Have Learned in 50 Years. Mm -hmm. And you say, my emotions are bad signals telling my brain what feels good or not Mm -hmm. in my life. I need to listen to my emotions more than my brain. That, Mm -hmm. yeah, that really stopped me for a while. Yes. Yes, that's exactly it. We need to listen Mm -hmm. instead of trying to escape them. Right, Paula? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think the emotions are our body's language, whereas our mind is always wanting to be front and center, right? That's its job is to to put everything in a nice little box and give it a meaning. And that's very sort of the masculine side of you know, right. way of doing it. And we, mm. we all have masculine and feminine, right. but right. 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 I believe that those emotions and um, I've even more recently been calling it the, like your inner voice, it's your mm. intuition. Yes. It's the, it's the part of you that knows better than your brain, right? Yes. It's your highest self. It's your, um, it's the one that whispers, does not, doesn't yell. Mm. Yeah. Right. Mm, yes. And to me, that's when I say emotions, I feel like that's the into I wrote that that was like four years ago. Yeah. And it's in the last four years that I've becoming uh, um, I've been learning a lot more through inner voice facilitating and working with different wonderful teachers yeah. around really connecting to that inner voice, because we can throw that word around really loosely intuition because right. um, we all have it. You know, we right. have. It's actually uh, the yogis say the three causes of disease. Mm -hmm. Um, The first is ignoring Mm -hmm. that intuition. The part of us that says, um, 
go do this, don't do that. Have that second cup of coffee, don't. Say those words to your husband, even though you know they're going to start a fight, but I still do it anyway, mm-hmm. right? So it's right. like uh, right. disregarding your higher wisdom. Right. The second cause of disease is disregarding and ignoring and even damaging our senses, our five senses, the way we mm. perceive the world. Yes. Um, yeah. And then the third being living out of alignment with nature's rhythms. So that mm. intuition is such a big part, right? Because yes. that's, that's our soul. That's our yeah. spirit. Yes. That yes. the more I believe we ignore it, it gets quieter and quieter, but we all have it. And sometimes it's really scary to listen to it because it might lead you mm. down a path that is uncomfortable mm. or scary or, mm. you know, yes. might have you leaving a relationship or changing right. a job or creating boundaries that right. you know will have a certain ripple effect, whatever that is. So, mm. yeah. yeah. So to me, that's what those emotions are. They're now your inner voice intuition yes. higher self yeah yeah so what's not to love about that the knowledge of that right and right. that's yeah you mentioned the word ignoring is to do with ignorance which is not knowing so mm-hmm. the antidote is knowledge knowing so we can get to do something about mm-hmm. it um mm-hmm. so what the the interesting thing about intuition is that we we doubt it. I think that's the main thing because it's so mm-hmm. quiet as you said it doesn't scream so we are uh, we tend to doubt um, that inner voice. So how, uh, what have you found to be very helpful mm-hmm. to release, to let go of that doubt? Um, mm-hmm. I'd love to hear about that, the techniques, the practices that can lead us to ignore mm-hmm. the doubt, actually. get a, Let them be, in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know, there's practical um, practices that I've been taught through one of my coaches, uh, Lissa Sandler, who's amazing and a dear friend um, around emotional letting like no feeling the emotion. Yeah. Right. Often like and and giving it a shape, giving it a color, you know, maybe it's a beanbag, maybe it's a, Mm. a tennis ball, maybe whatever, a rock. And where do we feel it in our body? And then using the breath, right? Like the breath to breathe into that and to notice there's a practice. I haven't done it in a while and I'm so excited to dive back in. I actually am looking to get um, certified as an inner voice facilitator. It's on my Mm, list. Um, And to notice Like when you ask a question to your intuition, notice the thought that precedes it. That is like a a thought that it's your mind. So being able to differentiate between the mind thought and Mm. your inner voice, Mm. right? So dropping Mm. into your breath and then asking, and it is a beautiful practice when you can work with somebody else that knows how to do this. Uh, to facilitate this where they will ask your literally talk to your inner voice and your job is to notice when your mind kicks in and to do it it's almost like blowing a fly away like you Mm. like just blowing that away knowing that it's not going deeper and deeper into that intuition I mean that that's that's a whole different thing and you know that's not something I you're you're listeners are going to probably pick up and get to do, but like that is so that we really get into the heart of, yeah. of, of those emotions. And sometimes yeah. like they can be so painful and hard, but to bring ourselves into that present moment and to be able to sit and to hold ourselves yes. right in a safe place and, um, mm-hmm. And to be able to differentiate between the mind thoughts and our inner voice. And then I also Mm -hmm. love just the practice of journaling. Like I bring that into Uh, a lot of my programs is just putting pen on paper and having some prompts um, that you can, you know, just to trigger, to ask your inner voice, you know, how do I inner voice? How, what do you want me to do in this situation or inner voice? Help me to see what, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like you can actually 
Yeah. Ask your, talk to your inner voice. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Have yeah. a communicate with it. So whether yeah. that's through speaking or through writing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You see, in that, it always goes back to the, um, the fundamental truth practice of listening, of being quiet mm -hmm. enough, right, to, to hear. Yes, a billion times to that. Um, and then it goes back also to what you said early when I asked the question about the purpose of life. If there was only one, what would that be? And you said love. So yes. I guess that's one of my guiding <clears throat> really principles is um, to know, to feel the difference between what is arising from love and what's arising from fear. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear to the body and mind these days what mm -hmm. they feel like. And then that's how I know that whatever I'm supposed to do and um, whatever the decisions that I'm supposed to make, I always go back to that feeling. Does it feel like love? And love, mm. would, to me, would it feels warm, welcoming, safe. It's mm -hmm. open. It's fun. It's playful, too. It's very playful. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that makes me laugh e easily. So it's not, it, it doesn't stiffen the body. It doesn't really, it's mm. the opposite. It expands everything. It's amazing how. Mm -hmm. I feel the, it's almost like taking a, a deep breath and then yes. it just, everything feels so free in a way. Right. Yeah. And that's how I relate love to freedom. I can't help it. But when I do these, when I go into these practices to know what, um, what's coming from fear and love, then this idea, the concept of freedom arises too. Ah, this is what freedom feels like in the body, <laughs> in mind. Yeah. It's, Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Yes, it's so true, isn't it? Because often the things that we think we need to be doing, whether that's like how to run your business or how to, um, whether it's around, hmm. you know, your relationships or what you want to do in your life or whether that's like, do we sell the house or keep the house? <laughs> or do right, we right. move to a different yeah. country? Yeah. Or, you know, some of those yes. are really big decisions that often yeah. affect other people. <clears throat> and we have an automatic response to like, oh no, I can't. And here's all the reasons why. Why? Yeah. You know, and in my yeah. habit changing course too, it's sort of like as simple as like, well, no, I can't get, I can't go to bed before my kids or I can't go to bed at 10 o'clock because I have all these things to do before I get to bed. And here's the laundry list of things that I have to do, even yeah. though I know I'm going to wake up and be exhausted and tired and hit the coffee pot and feel like stressed <laughs> yes. out and short tempered, you know, it's even, e even though I know, right. Even though I already know that's, that's the, yes. uh, the, one of the causes, right? Even though I know I'm still going to do it <laughs> or, or not do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and I, it's amazing, Paula, with the, you know, the, the, another concept is knowledge and wisdom, mm -hmm. which I have asked so many people here. And I have heard about uh, wisdom being the application of knowledge. So knowing something is not enough, right? It's the, um, the embodying what we know that sometimes matter too. Right. I mean, yes. for the body, mind very much matters, right? If we embody what we know. So it, it, that's, I can't help it, but I'm such a, a lover of wisdom, not just knowledge, knowing truth, but also living it. And mm -hmm. another thing that I heard, I mean, I have to go back to what you do in a moment. Gosh, like I said to you, offer I could we, I could talk to you for ages. <laughs> we I know we need to go have a tea somewhere. Where are you? <laughs> yes, that'll be fun in in Florida, Clearwater. That'll be fun. I know you're in Los Angeles. You're far from me. I know. But um, <clears throat> let's see. I have heard something um, really interesting that I have been reflecting every day. Uh, I go uh, go to sleep and I wake up with that reflection. Somebody said um, it's not that. It's not that we are having, um, you know, has, people say that we are having, uh, it's having a spirit, having a human experience. Mm -hmm. You probably heard about that, mm -hmm. that we are going through. This is the spirit having a human experience. So the more I lean towards <laughs> that, the more clear it becomes. It's almost like mm -hmm. uh, God trying to be mm -hmm. human. Mm -hmm. That would look like this. It's just not. It would be a mess. <laughs> um, right. Something so perfect, infinite, trying to be finite. 
Oh, I love that. And that reminds me when my teacher says, um, spirit doesn't need a website. Spirit doesn't <laughs> no. need a bank account. Spirit doesn't need a Tesla. You know? <laughs> right. We do, right? We humans. Right. But what about if we are the, uh, you know, it's if we are God, goddesses, um, mm-hmm. trying to be human. It's quite the opposite, right? Because some people, they're they are trying to be God or goddesses, the opposite. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, we might get out of this human thing, mess, and just become something else, become something more elevated. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it might be the other way around. Um, I, that really um, got me reflecting. I, I love, you know, just going deeper into these reflections. But... So that it would look like this. We're all learning here, right? Something. We are having experiences that are all different. And mm-hmm. um, not, if all of us experiences, some of them or most of them will be challenging. So going back to what you do and why you do it, I, uh, you said it and I read, of course, on your website too, on, on, in your bio, you work with women only. So I'm wondering what that is. Why is only women, Paula, and not men as well? You know, Larry, I think it's more about honing in on um, as much as I would love to work with men also. Yeah. I, up until this point, have been running um, communities and coaching groups that, uh, you know, really create an environment of safety and um, conversation and community around common situations, whether it's parenting, whether it's, you know, um, it's mostly the only reason why I've done that is because, you know, you have to kind of decide a little bit, especially in these Uh group coaching Yes. Uh, communities. Yeah. I'm not doing that so much in my um, in my seasonal cleanses because I think they serve everybody. However, you know, when you start with your marketing and your messaging and who you're speaking to, you kind of need to speak to one person and you're not really speaking to anybody. Mm-hmm. So that's sort of the one person and that's who I relate to. And I can speak from a place of having gone through it myself. Right. Um, uh-huh. However, I don't think men are all that different, you know, mm-hmm. and I think men, unfortunately... Yeah. They don't have as many of these communities. They don't mm-hmm. have, they, they, it, it's just part of going back to hunter and gatherer and nurturers and mothers, you know, mm-hmm. that men yeah. don't have um, the same conversations that women have, you know, they don't mm-hmm. sit around talking about their feelings as much as, as mm-hmm. we do, which I think right. is beautiful. And we're right. so blessed that that's sort of what we've mm-hmm. come from. Um, and I mean, honestly, I have had, three people in the past 10 years that I have known that have um, men that have taken their own lives. And yeah. that to me is yeah. so sad. And it's yes. like, why? Because I don't, I'm not, I can't assume anything, but I can feel that it's that there's a loneliness there. There's a sense of not being able to live up to a certain standard that they think is expected of them, whether it's financially or, you know, whatever the case. But um, I just thought that was really interesting that it's only the men. Um, My husband is very talkative. He has very good friends that he has these conversations with, but I know that's not all men. And so I do have sort of in the, on again, again, on the list of my, to run a podcast or write my book and to, you know, yeah. do all these things yes. is to create a group coaching program for men, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. or to encourage other coaches who do yeah. similar things to, to really open that up for men. Cause I think they need it as much as we do. Mm. So Yes, yes. Um, actually what do you do? It's helping men, um, Indirectly, directly, mm-hmm. slash directly, yes. because if women grow, if we learn more about ourselves and we yes. uh, we begin to love ourselves unconditionally, then it's we'll just pass that on to the next person next to us. So that will be our husbands, our kids, yes. friends. Mm-hmm. So you are you are helping everyone by helping women. I guess I asked the question because. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just wonder if um, women needed more, was more in need of this message. 
but as you said, everyone needs uh, mm-hmm. everyone needs a a little healing, don't we? <laughs> Let's say, sure. yeah, all of us. And, all and of us. I think as women too. Sorry to cut you off there. Um, I think as women, though, you know, we especially in our modern times that we live in, yeah. um, we do expect ourselves. We do. We there is this, and not every woman, but like the women I know. I live in a big city. Um, you know, since I, um, I mean, for the last thirty years. And I see women trying to wear all the hats Mm, to be the best mom, to be the best um, wife, lover, um, cook, uh, bring the money in, you know, to do all these things. And there's this expectation that we can do all that. And the thing Mm. is, is that we really, we can maybe do it all. We just can't do it all at the same time. You know what I mean? And I think as women, we do have, uh, I think, I think also it's why we have the babies. <laughs> so yeah. we, we are yeah. strong um, and we, oh, we yeah. can do hard things. Um, yeah. But mm-hmm. I, I, I think it's um, like you said, it is so important because as the nurturers, generally, I say this, it's all very general because yes. men are nurturers too. And then we have everything yes. in between, right? <laughs> mm, um, yeah. That when we take care of ourselves, like in Ayurveda, the word is ojas. And you might've read that in my, oh, yes, my right. blog of Agni, Ama and Ojas. And it is, right. it is our energy reserve. Like it is our vitality. It is our, our life, um, our, uh, our strength. It is yeah. the thing. It's like the bucket Mm-hmm. You know, that keeps yes. the universe of us together. And if that bucket, if we're constantly giving and giving and giving, and I like to think of it as <laughs> have the image of a, a metal bucket when you've taken a tool and you put holes in it, right? The water's yeah. pouring out. Yeah. That if we're not replenishing that bucket, and I know this is not uncommon, like I've been talking about this stuff for years, but like everyone's sort of talking, like fill your cup. And it's true, yeah. you know, if we're not refilling our our bucket, mm. we, we run it, we start to run a dry bucket and we start to like go into a deficit. We start to actually, that's burnout, right? That's when our immunity, that's our immunity, our immune system. That's when things start to really break down. And then how useful are we, right? Hmm. I've had clients um, say, and there's a belief that is, I learned from my mother that you do everyone else first and then you do you. And I'm like, no, that's backwards. (laughs) And that's what I think our mothers did. You know, I'm in my 50s. um, So that generation before us, that might have been something that they learned from their mothers that had to because like my grandma Pister in Saskatchewan on the farm in Canada had six children, didn't have electricity, had to grow a garden and mend the clothing and milk the cows and they had to like for survival. And I think things have changed obviously down the, down the pipe, you know, and our mothers might've perpetuated some of that belief um, that self-care is selfish, that you have Mm. to put everyone else first and then you do you. Um, But I think this, our generation. Yes. And then the, the generation, you know, my daughter and son, they're learning this differently because they are watching us take time for ourselves, put oil on our bodies, maybe, or, you know, sleep or um, hopefully get exercise or be in a yoga class or be, you know, eating healthy foods or, you know, even the little things. I think it's so important that our kids are getting a, a different message. And you're right. It is a trickle down. And our husbands are in our ecosystem, <laughs> mm, yes. right? And what's to say you become like the five people around you and actually the five people around them, which is kind of scary too, but you know, yeah, so you're right. We are, when we're taking care of ourselves. Yes. Um, and like you said, to also to know God, right. When we know that mm. we also see, we can see that in others. Right. And we can, yeah, we can honor and we can um, acknowledge that in other people too. Mm. You know, as Ayurveda yeah. teaches, we're like the microcosm of the macrocosm. We're a drop mm. in the ocean, right? Mm. So, um, yeah. So wow. it, it is so important that we that we uh, 
we do that. And I know a lot of women yes. that I work with have a really hard time with that because they don't feel worthy of it. Yeah. How sad. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing very important work. Um, thank you so much, Paula. Oh, thank for you. Doing what are you doing? And yes, uh, it's recognizing our divinity, right? That will change mm -hmm. everything because then mm -hmm. you ended up seeing the divine everywhere. Or right. everything sacred. And that would, I mean, that would change this whole reality here really mm -hmm. quick if we were able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you so much for being this guide to back to truth, not really to truth because we never left it anyway. It's always open. Mine's an open secret. It's right here, but we are not able to see it unless we kind of uh, remove all the other obstacles kind of change your perspective, right? Look a little deeper or in a different angle. So that's what you're doing with your work from what I see. And it's beautiful. You yeah. you talk about, we're almost at the end. Gosh, and I have so many notes here. <laughs> you, you say something beautiful. You wrote uh, the blog post is titled, I think it's titled, Being Happy and Taking Care of Yourself Isn't Selfish, It's Selfless. So under the topic that you just um, mentioned, mm -hmm. you say your self-worth has nothing to do with how much you can do. Your self-worth is inherent in who you are as a living, breathing being. You are mm -hmm. enough. From this place, you can truly begin to fall in love with, appreciate, and honor yourself for who you really are. This process is taking you. Uh, the, this process is about taking you, taking care of you. Um, this part I didn't have to even add here because it's so obvious, right? When you are uh, mm -hmm. loving yourself, appreciating, honoring yourself, and then everything's taken care of. So. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful message again and a reminder to all of us just mm -hmm. to go back to simplicity. Isn't it so simple? Right. It, it really feels to me in that way that it's so simple. So right. simple that we dismiss it, <laughs> that we just miss it and don't, and don't embrace it because it seems like the, we are too much in the mind, I guess. Mm -hmm. The mind complicates everything. Yeah, yeah. And I think too, because it can be so simple, we have, we do complicate it. We put more mm -hmm. on our list. <laughs> yes. We put more of our, the things, the goals and aspirations that may not even be attainable at a certain, you know what I mean? And then we, right. and then we feel bad right. about ourselves for not accomplishing all the things that we've told ourselves we have to do right. before we can be who we want to be. It's mm -hmm. like the saying, you yeah. know, is it have, do, be, or be, do, have. Right. 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 Um, right. Right. And if we can, and that being part, I, th I think is the most challenging for people because of all the outside noise and messaging mm -hmm. that we've been given that we have to first do all these things, Yeah. have the money, have the body, have the relationship, have the this, the that, the that, yeah. before we can actually be who we already are. Mm. Yeah. Return to love and to love yeah. ourselves yeah. <laughs> here and now, right? As it is, as exactly as it is. And, you know, I, I have conversations with so many people and I remember saying that to somebody, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we are what we are looking for. We are already whole. We are already it. And, yes. and I was feeling that in which I, that's one of my practices every day. So, mm -hmm. and I remember this person, she was a coach too. She said, some people cannot cannot hear that they are not ready for it mm -hmm. for this message because they have to go through the layers uh, and layers and layers of conditionings mm. so um, they to undo them or, or heal them they can't really they cannot bypass all those layers so it feels like that's the might might be the design right life is designed to teach us uh, to heal before we can get to enjoy the, the wholeness that we already are, which I'm always trying to you know, um, embrace the shortcuts. That's why I'm a student of Vedanta. Advaita mm -hmm. Vedanta is exa that's exactly that. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a wonderful shortcut, but it's a, a very profound one. It's not really something that, I mean, it could be in the moment done right here now, knowing that you are enough, that you are whole, that you are the infinite, having a finite experience. Mm -hmm. But it takes the 
it takes training the body and the mind <laughs> to mm-hmm. follow that, to embody that in, uh, you know, in every moment, which is, feels like that's really the practice. Right. Um, and mm-hmm. the job per se. Yeah. Um, and to add to that, I was, you, you got me thinking like in Ayurveda and in yoga, we talk about the five koshas. Have you, mm. are you familiar yes. with oh, yes. the five in bodies? The Yes. Yes. Right. So we're not just one body. We're not Mm. just the physical food meat body. Right. We are the pranayama, our breath body. We are our mental body, the the manamaya kosha. We are our wisdom, our intuition, which is our uh, vinyaya, vinyana maya kosha, and then the bliss. So when we affect one, we affect all of them. Right. Right. So we can be super spiritual. Like my dad was a little like this and it used to make me crazy because he was all about spiritual studies and that, but then he saw lemon pie as a fruit in the morning. You know what I mean? And I'm like, hold on a second. Like you have to take care of your body too. you know. And then there's the people that only take care of their body, but they don't know how to breathe and they don't know how to connect Mm -hmm. to their intuition Mm -hmm. and they don't trust their Right. Mm-hmm. So it's those it's yeah. all of these pieces that, that come together. And I mean, mm-hmm. like f- f- for, yeah. you know, how I work with women, too, it's like when we affect the out, the outer body is the easiest part. Right. The mm-hmm. diet, the lifestyle, yeah. taking care of our physical health, yes. because then that also has an impact on on the our our breath body, the life force, pranayama. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um and and it affects our mental body and the thing is is that for most of us it's that body the mental body that's driving the ship right Right. everything coming from the mind um and we can't really access those deeper layers of intuition and bliss spirit soul Mm -hmm. right until we've kind of worked on the, the 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 more accessible three layers i call it in one of my programs is inner wisdom, outer radiance, like that inner wisdom to take and that inner the health and what we do to create, um, you know, our what, what we do have control over. Right. Before if we're toxic, and we're stressed out, mm-hmm. and we're, you know, toxic to ourselves, tox filled with toxins in our body, yeah. we're sick, we're depleted how it's just going to be a lot harder (laughs) to access intuition. It's not impossible, you know, but, Uh, um, but these things, I think it's, it's uh, such a big part of it too. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. See, that's wisdom to me. It's the voice of wisdom listening Mm. to you now. Yes. Yeah. Like some people, they call holistic work, right? It's Mm -hmm. the same thing, but I know I think with your work, you go deeper than that because you bring, spirituality it's 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 right there it's so um it's it's fundamental to what you do i think that's um gosh i can't help but think about india as this mm. uh the mecca of spirituality <laughs> they it's there's so much wisdom spiritual wisdom there that mm-hmm. you know anyone working with those systems they have to be uh evolved in a way because um they really they touch on everything. It's the, like you said on your website, I love the, how education you are too with uh, what you do, you work with mm-hmm. Ayurveda, the mm-hmm. science of life mm-hmm. that just resonated a thousand percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Know, well, that's what the word means. Like Ayur yeah. means life and Veda means knowledge. So it literally yeah. means the knowledge of life. Like Ayur. that's, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, yeah. And it's not just um, something spiritual, philosophical, and you say it's scientific. Right? Mm-hmm. Nah, see, I, I really appreciate that. It's not just based on belief systems, faith. It's something mm-hmm. that we can clearly experience. If we apply the knowledge, then we will see the results, what mm-hmm. the reflection of that knowledge in, in our physical, which is not just like you said, it's the easiest is the physical, you're right, because we can see, but then it affects our entire lives when we apply this profound knowledge. It's, it's, it has been my experience. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So thank you again. And we are almost at the end. I want to mention, oh, Paula, yeah, I want to mention the, your services and the offerings, the specific ones. I know you have a new, is that a new membership? Yes. Mind, Body, Bright, Inner uh, Wellness Circle. Mm-hmm. Talk to me for a moment about that. I would love to hear more about it. I didn't read it on your website. Oh, I love that you're asking me because I am really doing a lot of work on how I want to deliver this right now. It's so funny. Um, And I feel like I'm feeling that it is a year-long membership. It's a women's circle because I'm so, um, I'm so drawn to bring women together in community. You know, I've run my programs in four month cycles in like shorter sort of like online course formats but I am just so being my, my inner wisdom is saying bring women together for a longer period of time. So they have a container to share, to, um, to experiment, to work through the habits because things take time. You know, I teach a habits course, which is all rooted in Ayurveda. It's basically the most basic down to earth nature inspired Mm -hmm. ways of taking care of our digestion, right? Mm -hmm. So our Agni of removing Ama, which is the toxins and building Ojas, which is really the three Mm -hmm. things that are, you know, the key players in optimal health and wellness. And especially for women as we're moving into new phases of life. Mm -hmm. So that is a, a year long. I am about to launch in like a week. I'm going to start sending out my emails Um, to a seasonal cleanse that I have been running for many years. And then I took a bit of a break and then I realized, no, this is Mm -hmm. mandatory. Like these seasonal cleanses literally enable breakthroughs that are otherwise impossible in terms of your health, in terms of your, you know, who you want to be, how you want to feel in your life. So I'm back to doing a 21 day seasonal cleanse, which is not 21 days of cleansing. It's seven days in the beginning of preparing and being in the container and telling your family what you're doing and shopping. And then it's seven days of really going deeper into the cleanse. And it's not a typical at all one size fits all. Like actually there's two options, the traditional Ayurveda cleanse and the design your own detox, which is the one that I'm really encouraging most people to do. So we get to choose it's seasonal foods. It's yummy. It's nourishing. And it's so much more than about the foods. It's about the self-care habits mm-hmm. that I teach. Yeah. And then the seven days on the on the end are like are emerging. So you're not just being sort of thrown out back into everyday life, but you're actually being held because you may be releasing a lot of mucus. You may be releasing mm-hmm. a lot of emotions. You know, mm-hmm. things may have changed. So um, so that will be starting on October 21st. Um And I'm so excited and I want to share this with you. Um, And I've actually, if, you know, I would love to give 20% off to your listeners. Mm -hmm. If anyone's interested in, um, in joining, I have an early bird and, and it's not really, you know, it's, it's not really much (laughs) to invest in yourself for this kind of transformation that, that people actually receive, especially as we're moving into the holidays and into a new year and coming off of summer because summer is also a really intense time for most people. It's also uh, in Ayurveda, it's pitta time, it's intense, it's hot, it's sharp, the qualities, plus we're traveling and there's all these things happening. So people usually, and like we naturally do it in the fall, like, oh, thank God the kids are back in school. You know, we're uh, back to a routine. Like we already naturally feel that. But there is a reality to that. And that's a lot about aligning with the seasons that is a big part of Ayurveda. And another reason why I really want to do a year long, because I want to really emphasize every season, you know, how we transition and how we can adjust our habits, our lifestyle, um, our mindset to every season in alignment with this, um, you know, with the seasons. So, so that was a long winded, um, uh, <laughs> story about what I'm doing, but those are my two offers. I also work privately with people one-on-one. Yes. Um, and so, so those are other, other ways to work with me, but. That's really wonderful. And thank you for the 20% off. And I'll have this in the podcast notes. Okay. Please send me the link. I think I don't have the link to the page, Paula. Can you please email, 
email me that when you have a chance. So I, I'll have it here. They'll Definitely. On the podcast notes, and I'll have that note there. So 20% off, that sounds really inviting too for most people who have spent a lot, right, with the, with the traveling and doing all the, the fun things during the summer. So thank you for that. And um, I apologize for the rush. Um, the Your website is mindbodybright.com. I'll have it here. And before we say goodbye, I would love for you, we didn't talk about the, the few things I have learned in, in my 50s. That's something they, I mean, there's so much wisdom there. Mm-hmm. This would be like probably, I don't know, 10 podcast interviews. <laughs> All talk. <laughs> I mean, every, uh, every phrase, it, every, I mean, they're just insightful to me that I could just go forever <laughs> talking <Aww>. about them. <laughs> well, let's so have a you, part two maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that will be fun. That'll be a lot of fun. I'll save it here. So I'll have this here because I have them written all of them here. And so before we say goodbye, I would love for you to read the poem. So a noble a a, a traveler. A noble and a traveler. Oh, yes, please. Uh, oh, if I can get beautiful. through it. Okay. This was actually a poem my father wrote. It might have been even earlier than 2003, but he did let us know that he wanted this read at his celebration of life. And this was like Mm. 20 years ago. So, um, okay, here we go. From some other time, from some other race, I stopped for a visit from some other place. All those left behind me, but I brought yet a trace of all of the places I've been to in space. I stayed till I was tired to learn what I must, then moved on with joy to my home in grace. My clothes were my body, it fell off in lust, For it was only borrowed, yet a great sacred trust. Genetics of my parents, my soul, my own. I owe them so greatly for their selfless loan. It served for the moment and offered a ride to view my creation I produced from inside. Mm -hmm. I passed through the curtain to appear once again on the stage of the theater with all of my friends. I learned from them and they learned from me, interchanging our roles, growing eternally. I retained the best features that I ever had with the help of my friends, so these I did add. I washed out some of my vices, my lusts, and my sin, and learned from the voices of my master within. Mm -hmm. He heard all of my wishes, provided my needs. He gave me the answers and governed my deeds. He is my silent teacher, the voice of the soul, persevering relentlessly and making me whole. I've been here many times, each time playing the role that I most needed then for the growth of my soul. In the fourth generation, I'll appear once again with a plan for perfection and a lifetime to spend, seeking final completion of an eon, eon long quest to reach the next level in the alchemil, in the alchemil test. Yes. Until finally perfect, no need to return, no problems to solve, no lessons to learn. Then I can rest my journey complete, perfected and purified in my creator's seat. Mm-hmm. Then through other dimensions, in steps not yet trod, I will finally arrive at reunion with God. I chose this experience. I wrote the play. I chose the actors I performed with today. It has been what I've made it and another to blame. I'm a noble and traveler in life's wonderful game. Wow. Wow, oh, it's beautiful. It's really it profound, too. <laughs> I love the... Um, the uh, the second to last um, mm-hmm. that w- that caught my attention the most uh, the arrive uh, and I will finally arrive at reunion with God. Mm-hmm. So that's when you feel like you you have learned everything. And you, yes, you, the journey is completed. That's really really beautiful. I know he, you have more, right? That's another podcast interview only about his poems too, but mm-hmm. in in your life lessons. Anyway, so. I want to thank you again because there's so much to talk and um, the, I feel like time is limiting too. Yes. The podcast is usually 30, 45 minutes and, I have, <laughs> and all that. So, but yes, to be continued. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so yeah. it has, has been wonderful. I love, 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 love your your resonance. It's Aww. an energetic thing. It's It's so... It's joyful, it's light, it's playful, it's young. <laughs> it feels very fresh. I love how fresh you sound. Aww. So thank you thank for you. yeah for passing that on. I know this is something that's like it's a nonverbal thing, so it's energetic. So thank you so much for being you, for embracing you as you are in doing the work that you're doing to help others. Oh, and you too. You too. Thank you. Thank you. I I feel very honored to have met you and to have had this time with you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. 
Thank you, Paula. So we'll be in touch again. Take good care of your beautiful self. And until the next time. Bye for now, Matthew. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Paula Pister and her work, please visit mindbodybright.com. To learn more about the 21-Day Fall Reset and receive a 20% discount, use the code QUEST20. Go to mindbodybright.com backslash fall cleanse. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.